right, it's time to get my Black Project Jazz Bass wired up, set up and buttoned up. As a bass player, I really like to be able to regulate the pickup heights. That's not just between pickups, one pickup to the other, but also between the bass and treble sides of your guitar. And jazz bass pickups are notorious for getting stuck in their routes. These covers are actually quite a nice fit, but you often do have to remove a little bit of material from the cover or even the route itself just so they adjust freely. That's a drill that fits fairly snugly in those holes. I think it's probably three and a half millimeters or four millimeters or something. And I'm actually running it backwards to transfer those holes down to the bottom of the routes. I should say I've already filled the original holes just with some bamboo skewers and some wood glue. Now I've switched to a skinny drill bit, a 1 16th or something like that, so I can drill the pilot holes. And I'm just using the, the features in the route itself to align the drill and make it as upright as possible. This is an old set of pickup screws and uh, I'm just putting a bit of lanolin grease there because the threads are just getting a little bit of corrosion on them. It'll also make them more easy to adjust. After setting up one of my own instruments, sometimes I find myself on the first gig or two in a set break just tweaking the pickup heights. So an extra minute or two when you're installing them I think is well worth it. So I've ordered uh, three or four extra control plates and I'm going to hook the pickups up with these three-way snap connectors. And that's because I want to make some videos talking about and trying out the various two pickup passive bass wiring options. Obviously VVT is the most common. Fender originally released the jazz bass with a stack pot controls and then when they reissued the basses they did a stack pot layout as well uh, but it was wired differently. A lot of people are opting for blend pots these days and there's two or three different types of blend controls. There's also other little tweaks and mods you can do. I don't actually have a crimp tool that's suitable for these tiny little connectors, but the needle nose pliers seems to be squeezing them up just fine. I have tinned those wires and I just ran a little bit of solder in there for good measure as well. Don't ask me why this little beige connector has the number eight written on it. It's left over from another project, I guess. I found it in one of my parts bins and it matches the, the black connectors that I'll use on the control plate. I think that's a 47 nanofarad cap, but to be honest, with my other passive bases, I very rarely run the tone control low enough for the cap's value to make any difference at all. Having said that, I will still spend a bit of time tweaking the tone control when I have the time, a bit like I did with my Red Project Strat. These pots are out of my junk box. Of course, I wouldn't use junk box parts on other people's instruments, but this bass is a project bass for myself, of course. The pickups in the bass are very standard, sort of Alnico 5 single coils with 
42 gauge wire I think the bridge is wound to maybe 8k and the neck is like seven and a half K or thereabouts the pots are also standard values they're all 250k although for the two volume pots I'm using linear taper pots or B taper pots with passive VVT wiring those two volume controls are as much tone controls as anything else to be honest and having linear taper pots as volume controls means you can tweak the interaction between the two pickups a little more gradually. I'm not entirely sure what this connector's actual name is, but the spacing is the same as header pins, a tenth of an inch pitch, and they're very standard sort of things. I probably could have just left it dangling, to be honest. I can't imagine it would be a problem that way, but I decided to glue it down for good measure. So even after years and years of wiring guitars, you still from time to time make boneheaded mistakes. <laughs> and this is right where I realized that the route in this body was actually not quite big enough for 25 mil pots. So I guess I could have removed some of the shielding tape and then rerouted that end of the cavity, but I decided it was easier just to replace the neck pickup volume pot. bit of Murphy's Law here that earth wire is probably just long enough but it would be quite taut and even with shake proof washers and everything it's usually best practice to leave a little bit of slack on the wiring just in case the pot did loosen off. I could have you know removed another earth somewhere and, and wired it from somewhere else but I decided to just lengthen the existing wire. There's only so many times you can desolder and resolder pot lugs and stuff before you start damaging pots. I should say that the earth wire from the bridge is soldered to the copper shielding tape and if this was a permanent installation for me that wouldn't really cut it because it's relying on a couple of mechanical connections to make its way all the way to the jack sleeve. I'd normally have a soldered wire connection for the string earth but since I'm planning it to kind of quick swap different control plates I'm fine with it. In fact I'm running a copper tab up to all three control plate screws. just putting a little piece of guitar pick or something between the two halves of the split shaft. Even with those brass adapter bushings that take your six mil shaft out to quarter inch, well, even with one of those, I like to pack out the split shaft because the grub screw on the knob is still likely to crush and break the shaft. So with the strings on it's pretty obvious this neck will need a shim. It's pretty common when you're putting parts guitars together. But I can still tweak the nut slot heights because I'm referencing them from the first and second frets. The A string wasn't really running through this string tree perfectly smoothly, so I thought this was a good chance to deburr those channels. The 
because this neck's been used on another project base and the new holes are very close to the old ones. Well, I decided to reinforce the threads in the new holes with some thin CA. I did a quick tech video on it, so check it out. I also used a little bit of lubricant on the threads as well. It just means the screw will follow that thread and uh, it's less likely to cut a new one and strip out the hole. Now, as I mentioned in other videos, after I prepped the body for respray, there was a lot of sand throughs because the original gloss black finish was, well, it wasn't very well done. And I just thought it looked cool the way it was. So I just went ahead and clear coated it. Plus, since I more or less assembled the base from parts, I've decided to call her the Not a Relic. I did adjust the truss rod while I had the neck off, but it clearly needed another tweak. In fact, I think I gave it a third tweak later on. And because the adjustment is down on the heel, well, I have to remove the neck or at least loosen the neck to get to it. That's another reason to reinforce those threads. For this build I had I think all of the parts except for the bridge at hand so it's one part that I did buy and I think I just bought it on AliExpress I think they're only 20 or 30 bucks these bridges and I've kind of been pleasantly surprised it's a really solid design has a bit of mass but it's not crazy heavy the actual saddle pieces are held in place and then the blocks that they sit on can slide back and forth and then they're in turn held in place with sort of diagonal jam screws. I think I will replace all of the fasteners in it though. Those little black steel grub screws, they're not terribly well made and they tend to rust over time. So I'll probably replace them all with stainless. In fact, some of them are already rusting. Even with replacement stainless steel grub screws, you really have to be quite gentle with these. They're only three millimeters long and they're an M3, so they've got quite a fine thread pitch. It's very easy to strip them out. They don't need a lot of torque to do their job anyway. I did, of course, also set the intonation on this bridge. Maybe I forgot to turn the camera on. I'm not sure where the footage is. You'll have to take my word for it. There is a lot of interference in my workshop and single coils, even with all the shielding in the world, are quite noisy, but I did a bit of recording with this base and it was fine in my recording space and I also geeked for the first time with this base on the weekend and it was perfectly fine on stage as well. I reckon it's probably the first time in maybe 10 years that I've actually done a gig with a passive base. And it's, as far as I recall, it's the first time I've ever done a gig with a jazz bass, certainly one that I've owned myself. I'm traditionally a P-bass kind of guy, but so many great players are jazz bass players, of course, and a lot of my friends who are also really great players love their jazz basses, so I'm gonna persevere and do a few more gigs and just try and get my head around it. The two volume controls thing is a bit weird, but <laughs> we'll see how we go.